Welcome to the Art of Rust. I am Ventola, and this is episode one, Painting Basics. This is where I'm gonna show you what you can paint on and how to use that painting interface. Now, a lot of rust art that you see ends up looking like this. It looks like it was done in MS Paint. It comes out very pixelated. But if the little practice and a little time, you can uh, make your art look like it was done with actual paint. This adds some realism to the game and also makes your bases look that much more impressive. Okay, so what you can paint. There's a lot of different things that you can paint in Rust. Uh, they've made it a huge feature. Now to see what you can paint, you'll go to the Umbrella Items tab here, and you have a lot of different things that you can find. Uh, you can get them out of barrels. Barrel hunting is really good for stuff. Uh, get you those blueprint fragments, upgrade them, uh, pages, and start learning different things. You have your signposts, which are pretty quick and easy to learn, uh, your large wooden signs, uh, your town signpost. You know, these are really great if you want to do uh, landscape stuff. If you just want to go out, you can place them in the ground anywhere. You don't need a wall to attach them to. Also, you have the two-sided uh, hanging signs. Now, if you're playing on a role-playing server, uh, run a store, something like that, these look great hanging out in front of your shop front. And it also comes in the ornate version. And then you also have your banners. Banners are fantastic for a large clan base. You have the ones that can be set on the ground, the large banner on a pole, and you also have the hanging banner. Hang those from your sniper towers, put your logo on there, and everybody knows who shot you. It's really, really fun. My favorite, of course, is the picture frames. Now you have portrait picture frames, you have landscapes, uh, tall picture frames are kind of nice. Uh, and then the big ones, the extra and extra large picture frame you see here, these take up a lot of space. You need two full um, wall, flat walls to attach it to. Um, so great for if you have a big great hall or a meeting room in your clan base, put that up there, you know, do a depiction of an awesome raid that you won or something like that. It makes a really, really impressive visual for screenshots or if you're doing a video of your own base. To make anything, um, wood, fragments, cloth are the big resources that you'll need uh, for picture frames. Uh, wooden cloth, 150 of each. Uh, bigger ones, three or 500 each. Uh, get some items in your inventory. Pick your picture frame, hit craft. It takes about a minute to two minutes to make any of the picture frames or signposts. And once it's done, it'll pop up your inventory like an item, any other item. Drag it to your hotbar, and then you're ready to place it. Select it, and you'll need a nice flat wall. And it doesn't really like to be placed near anything else, like doors or windows or things like that. It's just really strange what it will and will not attach to. So go for a nice flat spot, it'll turn blue and then you can place it by left clicking. Once it's placed, it'll hang up on your wall just like any other picture. Approach your picture and it'll give you the option to paint sign. If you hold E and bring up the options wheel here, you also get the ability to lock edits. When you're all done with your painting and you really, really like it, you lock it and then nobody else, including yourself, can ever go back and change it. And that helps uh, prevent griefing and that kind of thing. So, uh, once you're there, slap E to get into the painting interface. All right, now let's look at the painting interface. Now the painting interface is a little weird because it takes you out of the world to an extent, so it makes you really vulnerable if you're gonna paint outside. So keep a sharp ear out, you can still hear, but you just can't see very well what's going on around you. So if another player or say a bear comes up, you might get killed. Uh, to help you with that, we'll look at the update and cancel buttons here on the side on the right. Uh, if you've been painting and you like what's going on, hit update. This will save your changes, put you back into the world so you can do what you need to do. If you've been working for a while, you don't like what you've done, why did I add purple? Hit cancel. That'll undo anything you just recently did, put you back in the world. You go see what's creeping around outside, shoot them, and get back to work. All right, back in the interface. Now, whatever you're gonna paint shows up in the center here in this big window. 
So our portrait picture frame looks really nice and good, good rendering of it. If you're going to do a sign or a banner or whatever, it'll show up here. You can rotate your object by using the right mouse button, click and hold. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And you can also pan by holding shift and using the right mouse button. Ooh. This comes out really important when you do the extra extra large frames and the banners. They're so big they don't fit in this window very well. It is all scaled. So you're going to have to do a lot of panning and zooming to get an entire picture done, a large picture done, and you'll have to do it in sections. So that's how you see stuff. Now this is also an interesting thing. When we're painting at night we have this uh, kind of glow. You can still see what you're painting even though it's dark out. Uh, this is nice, but you do get a lot of shadow if you're not looking directly at the light source, which only comes from the top right for some reason. So if you're going to do a lot of color mixing and a lot of sh shading and stuff like that, uh, if you do it at night, things are going to look really weird. And you can also see we've got some uh, airdrop uh, red going on here. So that, that'll be fun. Um, so once you've got that all situated and you've got your view down, you can start painting. Now the controls over here on the right uh, control everything from your brush to your color. At the very top you have this trash can. That'll wipe everything out while you've been working so you can just start completely from scratch. Uh, and It'll take you to the bare metal, the bare uh, canvas, whatever you've been working on. Underneath that are the brush controls. I won't mention the save icon except for quickly because I don't think it does anything yet. Now the brush controls underneath here, there's three, to three of them. The top one is the brush size. Pick that, um, really, really large one. And yes, really, really big. Great for filling in bold blocks of color. Uh, this does scale a bit if you're using the really big canvases or banners. So if you practice on portraits a lot and switch to a large, extra, extra large canvas, uh, it's gonna look, it's gonna feel differently. Um, it's gonna feel more, like this. Uh, let's not use black on black. It's going to be very small. It's going to be smaller. So if you got to cover a lot of area, you're going to have to do a lot more work on an extra large as opposed to blanking out really fast on a portrait. Uh, this, the other sizes, whatever you're going to do, if you want to do big mountains, you know, big brush to get those boldly in. If you want to do a tree in the distance, use a smaller brush. Um, the very, very tiny brush is typically only good for putting in uh, signatures or doing single dots for like, if you're going to do an eye, and you just want to put a little reflection spot in there, like this. Ooh, a little reflection spot. Um, because it always comes out in this MS Paint jiggity edge style. So just kind of avoid it at any cost. Uh, let's talk about brush shape. This is where we really start getting into making things look more realistic. The big default is the square hard brush. So a lot of people jump in, it's all set to defaults, so they pick a smaller brush and then they write their lettering on. And yep, we're back in 1995 and everything is square and blocky. The next brush, this is what you want to be using for lettering. This next brush is what I call the fuzzy brush. Uh, it has a very dissolved edge to it. So and then we'll pick some color and we'll start writing. And instead of getting that jaggedy edge, now we have smoother edges dissolved out of the edges. That way we avoid that MS paint feel. We update, we step back a little bit. I wish it was daytime. But now it looks like somebody came along with a big fat Sharpie and wrote high as opposed to using a paint program. So that adds your realism to the paintings inside your base. The big circle uh, brush has a slightly dissolved edge, but you're going to end up with some jaggedy edges you'll see in the center here. You're going to end up with that and some more of that MS Paint style look to it. So kind of avoid that one if you can. The last brush is probably the most important brush that you need to learn how to use. And I'll just circle it right here with my mouse cursor. I call it the shader tool, um, the blending tool. It's kind of like all those fancy little tools in Photoshop. Uh, 
So if you've got, we'll just start here. We'll put some red down. And I'll show you what this thing can do. It's very dissolved. It doesn't put a lot of paint down. So what you can do is we've got some red. Let's take some yellow. And we're just going to lightly add some color. You can see that we're barely putting anything on there. And what we are putting down starts to look really orange because we're seeing the red through the yellow and we're making orange, which is really fantastic. And I'll show you why in just a second. If we really go hardcore at it and keep, keep layering it on, we'll get up to yellow. And that's where we can start blending and really getting those effects down. And if we went full tilt and down here, and suddenly we've kind of got a sunset going on. Yeah. It looks nice. All right, so the last brush control is the intensity or opacity of what you're using. If you're going to use the fuzzy brush, um, you want to bring down your intensity a little bit to really get that soft edge effect. If you go full blown, uh, full intensity, full opacity, and say you pick uh, some blue, um, it's gonna it's gonna cover up everything. It's like slapping on a ton of paint. Bring that down a ways. Um, I usually stick to either end of the spectrum, either full or these last couple here. If you do that, now we're getting softer tones. Now you see how instead of getting solid, we're seeing some of the other color come in behind it, which is really, really nice. Combine that with the, the, the shader brush in a really low intensity, and you're really putting on just the bare minimum of, of color and you can really do the shadowing uh, with this tool, uh, do shadows with this tool, and really, really picky blending, um, where you're gonna, as you can see my mouse is just going crazy because I'm putting tons and tons of layers of color very lightly over the previous layer. So everything starts to blend together, we lose those hard edges, and then suddenly we've got a really interesting sunset now. All right, so blending colors. Um, we'll talk about the color palette here. The color palette is incredibly limited. Uh, this is a very rust type of thing to do, and it's a very neat feature um, because it's the thing. Of it is, is these are the only colors that you could dig up while scavenging through Radtown or the military tunnels or something like that. It's very limited, uh, which forces you to be more creative with your artwork. Um, you have, we'll just go through them here, we have a lot of greens, teals, and blues, uh, which is kind of strange. Uh, then underneath that we have our browns, uh, oranges and purples, red, and then our utility colors like black, white, and grays. And then way down at the bottom is our cobalt blue. Not sure why that's by itself down at the bottom, but it's a great color if you want to do nighttime scenes. Put a moon up here. Some puffy clouds. Anyway, uh, so those are your colors. You don't have a lot to work with. You're going to find that uh, if you want to do, say, a military green or an olive green, something like that, um, this is what you have to use work with. You have that's very, very green or neon green or turquoise. You can't do uh, uh, a military olive green unless you start doing a lot of blending. Um, and that that can that can take some practice and that can take some practice with other brushes but that's another video for another day uh, just update that look at our terrible painting that we created today uh, i just want to thank you all for stopping by uh like the video subscribe i'm going to try and do some more videos that explain shading uh, doing landscapes doing portraits uh, working with uh, something like another picture that you want to do um, so check back and just want to thank, uh, do a quick shout out here to Clapping for Cash, a player on the server, kind of an inspiration to do this video. And also I play on the Rusty Rumble. It's a great vanilla server, uh, with a lot of great people and a really fantastic admin. So thank you and we'll talk to you later.